The Aesop for Children by Aesop Recording by Terry Torres The Wolf and the Shepherd A wolf, lurking near the shepherd's hut, saw the shepherd and his family feasting on a roasted lamb. Aha! he muttered. What a great shouting and running about there would have been had they caught me at just the very thing they are doing with so much enjoyment. Men often condemn others for what they see no wrong in doing themselves. The Goat Herd and the Goat A goat strayed away from the flock, tempted by a patch of clover. The goat herd tried to call it back, but in vain. It would not obey him. Then he picked up a stone and threw it, breaking the goat's horn. The goat herd was frightened. Do not tell the master, he begged the goat. No, said the goat. That broken horn can speak for itself. Wicked deeds will not stay hid. The Miser A miser had buried his gold in a secret place in his garden. Every day he went to the spot, dug up the treasure, and counted it piece by piece to make sure it was all there. He had made so many trips that a thief, who had been observing him, guessed what it was the miser had hidden, and one night quietly dug up the treasure and made off with it. When the miser discovered his loss, he was overcome with grief and despair. He groaned and cried and tore his hair. A passerby heard his cries and asked what had happened. "'My gold! Oh, my gold!' cried the miser wildly. Someone has robbed me. Your gold? There in that hole? Why did you put it there? Why did you not keep it in the house where you could easily get it when you had to buy things? Buy! screamed the miser angrily. Why, I never touched the gold. I couldn't think of spending any of it. The stranger picked up a large stone and threw it into the hole. If that is the case, he said, cover up that stone. It is worth just as much to you as the treasure you lost. A possession is worth no more than the use we make of it. The Wolf and the House Dog There was once a wolf who got very little to eat because the dogs of the village were so wide awake and watchful. He was really nothing but skin and bones, and it made him very downhearted to think of it. One night this wolf happened to fall in with a fine, fat house-dog who had wandered a little too far from home. The wolf would gladly have eaten him then and there, but the house-dog looked strong enough to leave his mark should he try it. So the wolf spoke very humbly to the dog, complimenting him on his fine appearance. "'You can be as well-fed as I am if you want to,' replied the dog. "'Leave the woods. There you live miserably. Why, you have to fight hard for every bite you get.' Follow my example, and you will get along beautifully. What must I do? asked the wolf. Hardly anything, answered the house dog. Chase people who carry canes, bark at beggars, and fawn on the people of the house. In return you will get tidbits of every kind, chicken bones, choice bits of meat, sugar, cake, and much more besides, not to speak of kind words and caresses. The wolf had such a beautiful vision of his coming happiness that he almost wept. But just then he noticed that the hair on the dog's neck was worn and the skin was chafed. What is that on your neck? Nothing at all, replied the dog. What? Nothing? Oh, just a trifle. But please tell me. Perhaps you see the mark of the collar to which my chain is fastened. What? A chain? cried the wolf. Don't you go wherever you please? Not always, but what's the difference, replied the dog. All the difference in the world. I don't care a rap for your feasts, and I wouldn't take all the tender young lambs in the world at that price. And away ran the wolf to the woods. There is nothing worth so much as liberty. End of section 26